Hey, what's up? It's Wick for Wikimedia, and today we're finally gonna dive into an actual mixing session. I found I recorded a very young band in Amsterdam at the Red Bull Studios, and you guys can download these multi tracks here for free. So you guys can mix along using the exact same tracks that I'm using in this video, so you can follow along with every step. It's a fairly simple song with less than 12 tracks of instruments. Actually wanted to go for 8 tracks, but I decided to add some stuff along the way. Um, this is actually recorded as a jam session on the spot in Red Bull Studios, so it's recorded without a click track, meaning that the tempo does slightly fluctuate. The free download can be found here, and you don't even need to register or log in to download these tracks. Although, I would appreciate if you could tweet or post on Facebook about this project. So now, without further ado, let's dive right in. So we're gonna go uh, over several phases of the mix and we've got a few learning objectives that we have for this tutorial. The bottom line is that we're gonna learn how to do a very basic mix in just a few steps. So let's dive right into my project. So I've got my Cubase project loaded up and I've imported the tracks into the, into the project as well. So I can add them to all the individual tracks. I'm gonna do the first run through and listen. Just be careful that it can be quite loud at this point because we're playing all tracks simultaneously. <laughs> So this sounds very rough. Here we've got a vocal part. So we're setting the pace, walking the melody line, looking at pedigree rhymes. We set the taste, take it back in the line now. Your mind is the pay day, just that's how to blind us. Remember that. With a nice guitar solo coming here. So now we know at least what this track is about. Um, there's two ways that we can now approach this and start mixing, and that is either the way that it is now with all the faders up and then we just basically start pulling them down to create a mix or we take all the channels and we take all of the faders down um, and in that case we basically start from silence again so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna select all of the tracks and I'm basically gonna pull all the faders down so now we're basically starting from silence so we're gonna play the song and just add in kick add some bass then add in the overheads add some guitar and once we have a little bit of a nice level balance we're gonna start to pan some of the instruments that need to be panned to a side so let's start by just playing the track and uh, moving up the faders so that's just bass and kick let's add in uh, the overheads and I'm first gonna stereo link them so that means I can just control one fader to control both of the channels. We've got some guitar spill, but that's, uh, that's normal. Add some guitar to it. Definitely keep an eye on the master fader because we want to prevent clipping already in this stage. But this seems to work. I'm gonna stereo link the keys as well. Add in some saxophone. So this is just levels. You can see the only thing we've done is throw up some faders. So the next step is involving some panning. Um, I want to pan the overheads left, right, um, respectively. I'm not going to go too wide. I'm probably going to go between 30, 40, something like that. But if you want wider, you can obviously choose to. We're going to pan the keys all the way to the left and all the way to the right to recreate their original stereo signal, so that's already done. And we're going to pan the guitar 1 and 2 a little bit left, right, respectively as well. Um, and we'll do that as long as we play, but I'm not going to go too wide, probably around 30, uh, maybe, maybe even 20. Let's see how it sounds. <laughs> Of 
41 under overheads, not too wide. If we want, we can pan the saxophone a little bit. So, a um, little bit of panning going on here. Uh, most of it is quite subtle. Um, we've got some level changes already going on, and you can see the master bus is not even near clipping. We've got a decent amount of headroom going on. So this is this is a good setup to start with. We could choose to start adding in the lead vocals uh, and the backing vocals at this point already from the verse. Especially because we're going to be uh, doing uh, some EQ and some compression. I personally like to mute them at this stage. Um, so there's two scenarios which I'll show in an uh, upcoming tutorial. We can either build our music around the vocals, so then we would basically start by creating the vocal sound and build the instruments around that. Uh, in this scenario, I'm basically doing it the other way around. So we can start by going into the second phase, and the second phase is going to be um, creating some definition, creating some separation between the individual instruments with the help of filters, EQ, and dynamic processors, so that could be gates or compressors or transient enhancers. First I'm going to add some groups because this is the, the stage where I'm going to be already using several subgroups. So I'm going to create some buses, um, stereo buses. Let's create around five. So the only thing I still need to do is route all the individual tracks to these buses. So I'm going to do that right now and I'm going to go through that quickly. So I'm going to speed that up. I'm going to look at what I want to EQ and how I want to separate some of the clashing frequencies. So I'm going to look at just the drums for now. That kick is intensely low for this type of song. So I'm going to go to the overhead bus and I'm going to EQ on both of the overhead tracks. And I'm going to go for the Gliss EQ, which is a third party plugin which I've got installed here. And I'm going to roll off all the lows first. I'm just going to use a high pass filter for that. This is getting rid of uh, a lot of the kick spill which is in the overheads. One thing that I'm already going to do is I'm going to make a small curve around 7 kilohertz. Just to get rid of a little bit of that cymbal sound. Notice because we only have overheads and kick is that any changes that we do on the overhead bus will affect the snare sound as well as the hi-hat sound as well as the cymbals and toms that are playing. Still have a separate kick track so I'm going to use an insert on that and I'm going to use a Gliss EQ again. I'm just going to clean up that very messy low end, that 30 hertz, 40 hertz. And I'm going to boost a little bit around that lower end of 70 hertz. And I'm going to add a lot of attack, which we can probably find around maybe 2 kilohertz. Even at 4, you can still hear there's a lot of overtones. actually like this kick sound. Just play through the song a little bit to see how that sounds. Slightly adjusting some of the levels, 
something that you'll probably do constantly uh, throughout the mixing process. So let's go to the bass because the bass is recorded with a DI and I want to give it a little bit more character, a little bit more crunchy sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a amp simulator. Um, obviously we could also choose to reamp it but um, well let's do it all in the box today. And I'm going to choose a bass amp preset which I've already saved. You can see it adds quite the amount of treble here, uh, presence, and um, I'm adding a little bit of drive which adds a little bit of a, a gritty sound to it. So this is a, sounding a little bit more like an amped bass. Obviously we can use an EQ after uh, the amp simulator if we want to add some tonal characters, maybe add a little bit of warmth or add some more plucking sound, um, but that's going to be up to you guys. So the guitar has got a lot of low energy, so I can probably do some of the equalizing actually on the bus that I've routed both of these tracks to. Um, but they are mic'd with different mics, so you can hear that this sound and this sound are completely different. You can hear this one is way more open, it's got way more definition, and this one sounds more muffled. And it's probably a good idea to use a little bit of different EQ um, on each of them instead of on the bus. So I'm going to use um, an insert on both of these guitar tracks. And I'm just going to solo this one. I'm going to roll off all that rumble and stuff we don't need, probably below 100 hertz. And what that's going to do, that's going to give a lot of space uh, for the bass guitar. And I'm going to do the same on this track. could choose if we want to compensate for the different sounds in guitar a little bit. We could choose to brighten this one up a little bit, maybe around 1k, 2k. still want to put the keys more in the back. So let's go to the overheads because I, I want to add a lot more punch to the drums. And a good way to do that, because we're so limited in the amount of tracks that we have, we just got snare on the overheads and I would like to make that a lot more snappy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for an envelope shaper or uh, a transient designer. I've got uh, the standard one from Cubase which is called the envelope shaper. What we're going to do is add a lot of attack to this uh, overhead sound and that's going to bring out the snare and some of the kick sound as well. I'm going to do it way too much right now so we can really hear the effect and then I'm going to increase the length of that attack so that we can hear some more of the actual snare sound of the snare. Like that. off so this is starting to sound uh, pretty pretty good and on the keys tracks I'm gonna remove all the bass and I'm just gonna use the standard channel EQ on the channel strip and I'm gonna roll off everything from let's say 50 Hertz same goes for the other keys channel. So 
Same goes for the saxophone. Let's roll off everything below maybe 80 or even 100 hertz. We can still add in some warmth if we want to look around 400 hertz. You can hear there's still a lot of warmth that we can add if we want that. So I'm just gonna maybe add a few dB. And let's look around maybe two or two and a half kilohertz to add some, uh, some air and brightness to the sax. Somewhere around here, 2.5. So even with the transient designer and adding some EQ to some of the tracks, you can see uh, we still got enough headroom left on the master bus. Uh, I can show you that on the large fader as well. So at this point, this is uh, really starting to sound like a, like a pretty good mix for the effort that we've put in it. So we're going to start by adding some compression and some other dynamic enhancements probably want to compress the overheads a little bit to give some more room sound to it but I probably don't want to compress the whole sound I can look for something that I uh, have installed on my system which is the the Fairchild by UAD which you might not have but you can use any type of other compressor if you want to And I'm just gonna mix this compressor in because this has got a wet dry balance so that's really cool about this uh, Fairchild. I probably want to get rid of some of the cymbal sounds and I can either use um, a multiband compressor or I could actually use, or at least try to use, a de for that. So let's go to... Oh, that's already pretty good by default. Let's look for somewhere here. You can see we've got some DSing actually on some of the snares, but not all of them, but definitely on the cymbal. So it's getting rid some of that really sharp edge of the cymbal. So I, I kind of like this. And let's go to some uh, bus compression, maybe on the guitars to give, uh, especially here when this part plays, you can see these peaks are a little bit louder uh, and shorter, and these are way more sustained uh, chords that are playing. So these don't need that much compression, but this part can use a little bit. I'm just going to use the default standard compressor that comes shipped with Cubase and neutralize it and put this makeup on uh, uh, manual instead of auto. Lower that threshold. It can be quite fast, the release can be a little bit faster as well. So just getting rid of some of the, the peaks, quite a fast compressor, a little bit of gain makeup to compensate for that. Probably want to do some compression on the bass as well, seems to fluctuate a bit, um, especially here you can see these are way louder than uh, for example the intro part. So let's try to compensate for that, make it more equal. This uh, release can definitely be slower rate you a little bit higher I'm getting quite the amount of uh, compression here so I can actually use some makeup gain and we're gonna look at these peaks here so that's definitely getting a lot of compression as you can see
I can remember I had an EQ on the overheads, decrease the sound on the cymbals even a little bit more, um, and probably make that bandwidth a little bit smaller. <laughs> seems to be better so you can see sometimes along the mix you'll go back to something you've done uh, you've done prior to that I want to add a little bit of brightness to the snare on the overheads see sometimes I boost it quite a bit just to look for that frequency I'm just adding I'm just adding around 1 DB 1.7 maybe even one should be enough What I did in my mix, I added a little bit of compression to the saxophone. I could use the standard compressor. Uh, I think I actually used one of the UAD plugins that I've got. I think I've used the uh, LA-2A. So then we can compensate for some of the peak reduction that we've got going on with a little bit of gain. So I could change the EQ a little bit, made it a little bit brighter, and I've changed the level of the sax as well. Um, so it's a little bit softer in the mix. So at this point, I probably want to start by adding the vocals, but one thing I notice is that the drums are a little bit dark, so I'm going to remove a little bit around uh, probably 300 hertz on the overheads. So that's just helping it to make it a little bit brighter. Minus five might be too much. Let's try minus three. So there we go. So um, let's start by adding in the lead vocal right now. Setting the pace, walking the melody line, looking at better good rhymes. Cause we setting the taste, hey, get back in the line now. We probably want some de-essing, we want a little bit of compression going on, and we definitely want some equalization going on. Um, and same goes for the backing vocals. We've got a third vocal track, um, which is actually a sketch take, which went wrong in the end, which you could probably hear if you just solo it. Key figures of D spirits and energies, channel me the free... Ah, <laughs> so um, that one is not really usable um, in the mix but what we could do is we could either cut this into a backing vocal track just by cutting uh, the words out and, and removing all that stuff so that it could work uh, as a backing vocal another way that we could do it is with mute automation so I'm just gonna do a quick mute pass and just unmute it whenever I want to add a backing vocal and uh, I'm gonna s fast forward this all right, so um, I've quickly done uh, the vocals. I've done some mute automation to create a second backing vocal layer, and I'll walk you through what I've quickly done. I first added an EQ, um, which removes basically all the lows again um, and adds a little bit around 2 kilohertz. After that, I've got a compressor, which compresses quite a bit. 
Who's always setting the pace, walking the melody line, looking at pedigree rhymes. Cause we setting the taste, hey, get back in the line now. Your mind is the pay date, the death. Which goes up to uh, 5 dB of compression. After that, I've got a de which is removing some of the sharp S sounds, and another compressor, which is not doing a lot, but it's a really fast one. So we're setting the pace, walking the melody line, looking at pedigree rhymes. Cause we setting the taste, hey, get back in the line now. Your mind you can see it's just grabbing 1 dB here and there. And after that, I've got a LA-2A, which is doing the overall uh, smoothening out of the of the lead vocal. So we're setting the pace, walking the melody line, looking at pedigree rhymes. We setting the taste, hey, get back in the line now. It's also not compressing a lot, uh, just maybe 2 dB here and there. So we're setting the pace, walking the melody line, looking at pedigree rhymes. So then on the on the backing vocals, I've used an EQ, which removes all the low stuff. You can see even up to 100 hertz, so they sound pretty thin. And I've done that on both of them. And they're compressed a lot. They're really com being compressed heavily. So we're setting the pace, walking the melody line, looking at pedigree rhymes. You can see that's a lot of compression going on, like uh, up to 13 dB of compression. Um, then I've got the bus of the... Of the backing vocals which has got a multi-band compressor on it to even make them sound it's a little bit thinner actually Pace, line, rhymes, taste, hate, line now. almost sounds like a uh, bandpass telephone type of filter and after that I've actually already inserted a um, reverb which is an insert on the group of the backing vocals and uh, it's a pretty short reverb time like 0 0.6 seconds and it's set to about like 8 in the mix so it's really 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 soft as well Pace, line, rhymes, taste, hey. But it just gives a little bit more depth to the backing vocals um, to get this even way better. And I think that's one of the most uh, crucial things about getting nice backing vocals is really making sure that all the words are perfectly aligned with the lead vocal. So uh, in, in my mixes, I, uh, I do a lot of editing on backing vocals to make sure that they're perfectly aligned. Sometimes that even means uh, chopping them up, uh, crossfading, doing all kinds of stuff, sometimes even stretching. Um, to really make sure that they fit perfectly. Um, I'm not going to go over that in this tutorial. I'm definitely going to be doing a separate tutorial on uh, vocal and backing vocal editing. The lead vocal is also being routed to this vocal bus, which is using a Fairchild with a little bit of compression. And you can see the mix is set to like 40%. So it's um, basically parallel compressing the lead. So we're setting the pace, walking the melody line, looking at pedigree rhymes, cause we setting the taste, tape. I want a little bit of reverb on the overheads, I want a little bit of reverb on the guitars, definitely some on the keys and on the saxophone as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two different reverbs and I'm going to add a effects bus and I'm going to choose any type of reverb. Let's just use the default reverb instead of uh, something fancy. Um, let's just use the reverence. And this is a default reverb for Cubase. I've added some reverb to the drums and I've sent just the overhead bus um, to this reverb. It's a really short room. I think it's uh, 0.6 seconds. And I've rolled off all the low energy from this reverb as well. And I've trimmed it down so it's uh, a little bit softer in the mix as well. <laughs> So I'm going to add some reverb um, to the other instruments and I'm just going to add one uh, other type of reverb. Um, let's use something like a lexicon reverb. I think that would work pretty well. Obviously you can uh, choose the reverb that you have installed for this. And I'm going to send uh, some of the guitars to it. So let's play around with the reverb settings to get a sound that I like. Probably a little bit shorter, less bass. I've again rolled off all the low energy from it, added a little bit of 1 dB around 1.2 kilohertz, and I'm going to send the saxophone to the same bus to give it some depth as well. Um, so I'm going to choose lexicon and send the sax as well. 
Softer. And something that I definitely want to send are the keys. I've sent the keys quite a lot because I want them to kind of drown in reverb that gives that sends them way more to the back. I want to give a little bit more space to the vocal sound um, by EQing on the guitars. And I'm going to remove some of the frequencies on the guitars, um, let's say around 1.5, maybe 2 kilohertz. Melody line, look in the pedigree rhymes We set in the taste, hey, get back in the line now Your mind is the pay date, the stats that are blind us Remember the hate date, we make date, we vacate The premises, the benefits, keep it moving and let it rip The music, it suits it, I have a hit Abusing these fools, take them on a trip Passive aggressive, I bring a message of better To keep the essence of energy in the setup We free and head up a leadership that'll get up and use the medium we use and that definitely creates some more space in the frequency region of the guitars. Um, if you have more instruments, this trick always works. Just get rid of a few dB. Now I'm doing it quite a lot, but sometimes it's just uh, maybe 4 dB. And just getting a little bit more space for the vocals on all the other instruments. Melody line, look in the pedigree rhymes. We set in the taste, hey, get back in the line now. Your mind is the pay date. So I've still made a few minor changes to the total mix. Um, I went back to the guitar bus and I removed some more of the frequencies in that vocal region. And I've also went to the drum bus and I removed some of the frequencies, uh, some of the fundamental frequencies uh, of the speech in this, uh, in this verse. Um, I also added an EQ uh, around 700 and I think like, uh, 2 kilohertz on the vocal and rolling off some of the top highs. So we've come a long way from the beginning. I would probably still fiddle with it a little bit, add some minor EQ changes, some small uh, changes to compressors perhaps. Setting the pace, walking the melody line, looking at pedigree rhymes. We setting the taste, hey, get back in the line now. Your mind is the pay date, the stats that are blind us. Remember the hate date, make date, we fake gate. The premises, the benefits, keep it moving and let it rip. The music, it suits it, I have a hit. Abusing these fools, take them on a trip. Passive aggressive, I bring a message of better to keep the essence of energy in the setup. So you can see you can make something uh, quite interesting from uh, only having that few tracks because this is a, a pretty basic mix and we have very few drum tracks and not so much instruments and we still manage to make it sound like a, a pretty warm and full production, right? So that was it for today's episode. I hope you guys have learned something and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to share your mix or have questions about your mix, please share it on the Wikimedia community where I've opened up a group where we can specifically talk about the mixes that we do with these tracks. So you can find that link right here. And if you've uh, really learned something today, you should uh, show off your skills in the Wikimedia Mixing Contest, which I'll be uh, announcing tomorrow. So that way you can uh, show off your skills and win some of these awesome prizes that we've got. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more of these mixing sessions of which you can be downloading the multi-tracks for free. Um, next up is a 16-track mix, which we're going to be uh, going to be doing soon. And at the same time, I'm also going to start the effects season. And the first episode for that is going to be about reverbs. So that's uh, one that you guys have been uh, requesting for a long time. I'm probably going to dive back into this session and uh, play around with it a little bit more. As always, this was Wick for Wikimedia. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see y'all soon. Peace!